Yeah, hello everybody and welcome. Um, I, I think it's um, um, <laughs> sort of fundamental to this that um, we set out the differences between um, Imprimo and, and Copyright Visual Arts. The, the, uh, while the two organizations uh, work together or collaborate a great deal, they are quite um, <laughs> distinct and separate. So um, uh, um, Copyright Visual Arts, which has been in existence for over 20 years and uh, when some of you may know it as under the acronym of CARC, um, and it's a, it's a co <coughs> copyright collective management uh, society uh, that was founded by, uh, by CARFAC, uh, but is now uh, run, owned and uh, sort of operated by, jointly by CARFAC and our sister society in, uh, in Quebec, Rav. Um, and uh, it primarily uh, works to uh, license uh, <coughs> um, uh, um, your work, uh, so it manages your co the copyright on uh, for exhibitions, for reproduction, um, publication, um, and 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 all sorts of uses that most any that you can think of really for uh, uh, where you would <coughs> where you should be receiving a fee uh, for your work. Now, Copyright Visual Arts also has uh, on its site uh, an image bank. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> but I believe the difference being that the, the, in the image bank on copyright visual arts, you are, there's a restriction on how many images you can put in. Whereas in Imprimo, um, you, um, you uh, it's basically unlimited. Uh, so copyright visual arts uh, uh, really is essentially isn't in the business of building your entire profile um, and, and you know it, it it concentrates on licensing uh, managing the licensing and getting you money for your work and you can find out more on their website um, but there is this wonderful link between it and 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 it uh, and in primo so that if you do put images and and already have work on their website you can, as Stephen will, will explain later, I'm sure, you can migrate that work over uh, quite seamlessly onto, uh, onto the Imprimo platform. So, uh, and I'll be happy to, to sort of answer other questions uh, about any of the differences as we go along, but that's a sort of a short summary of what it does. Yeah, very good. Um, so for today's agenda, uh, we were gonna have a conversation with uh, you, Patty and Bob. After that, we were. I was going to go through a bit of a demo, um, sort of focusing on some of the things that artists on the call can do on Imprimo to help uh, make things easier and promote themselves the best way possible, and answer questions at the end. Uh, just before that, we get into that. I did want to go through a little bit about Imprimo. Um, what I've noticed on these calls is uh, sometimes the chat can light up with these different kinds of questions. I like to preempt that a little bit by just showing um, a few slides and what in its essence Imprimo is and what it isn't, because we do get a lot of questions about like, how is Imprimo different than Platform X or Platform Y? And there is a lot of things out there, but we do feel that um, Imprimo uh, does have some essential things and essential point of view that is different than what exists out there today. So I'm just going to share my screen here. So I just first wanted to um, reiterate and say that uh, Imprimo is a project that's come together through the initially through the funding through the Canada Council of the Arts, and it's a collaboration between uh, Carfac Canada, Copyright Visual Arts, I mentioned, Raven Quebec, and Access Copyright. Um, Access Copyright um, about five or six years ago started an innovation lab uh, called Prescient, which has uh, gone on to be its own incorporation. And that's uh, what I work out of to help uh, build out Imprimo. So this is very much a platform that is um, for artists by artists uh, and these uh, groups here. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the vision of Imprimo, which is uh, we talk about internally as a metaphor is Imprimo is like a LinkedIn for visual artists. Um, right now we have 
um, artists that are being onboarded onto the platform, but where we want to be moving in the in the future. And right now we're sort of in phase one of of the Imprimo project. But as we move into the future, the future we want to be onboarding um, galleries and having accounts for them, ha having collectors and art lovers be able to come onto the platform and, and um, interact with galleries and artists, and also marketplaces um, as well. Uh, be able to have Imprimo in integrate into these um, other marketplaces. So if you were the type of artist that were to sell your work, you would be able to go out to these different marketplaces and sell your work there. So at this point, we are at this artist stage where we are onboarding the artists and building up different, different feature sets um, for the artists. But as we move into the future, it's very much trying to bring the ecosystem together and have them interact uh, with each other. The analogy, again, going back to the LinkedIn is, you know, before LinkedIn, if someone were to uh, wanting to uh, get employment, they would go to uh, uh, an employer's website, apply on the website, maybe do it through email, these kinds of things. The world is very much changed now because of LinkedIn, where people, where employers and employees are talking and messaging and interacting with each other on um, on the platform like that, um, and it's so it's become a very it's become a very different world that we exist in today as far as that employment side. Now we want to sort of bring in something like this for artists, where artists will be able to interact with galleries and um, you know dealers, collectors, researchers, all the different parts of the ecosystem, sort of all in one place and facilitate those uh, interactions. Also, when coming to this project at Prescient, we, we had a sort of an, a core principle that we wanted to bring. And I think this comes from being an innovation lab that comes from a copyright collective and you know, also working with copyright visual arts. You know, copyright is very uh, dear to our hearts and something you know, is part of, part of our raison d'etre. And what we saw in the landscape of the current internet is that, um, there's a lot of what we call misplaced trust that exists out there. I think we take it for granted that this is just the way the internet works when we're looking at Yelp reviews or comments on social media, you know, we sort of have to trust them to a certain degree because we have no other choice. But there's new technologies that are coming and that are gonna be incorporated into the internet. And we wanna be part of that, of, of you know, increasing that trust. So as I go through the demo, you'll see that uh, there's different things that are embedded into Imprimo that will increase trust in the audiences that come and view things on Imprimo. Whether you're looking at a work record or whether you're looking at an artist profile, you can um, have more confidence that you're looking at and interacting with the right artist or the right representative for that artist. And this is something that we are trying to uh, bring into uh, essentially the internet that we feel is lacking today. Uh, right now, we live in a world where um, artists' work can be um, misattributed, misused, used without um, without uh, consent, and we want to sort of bring that uh, more into play. Uh, when when talk, we did a lot of research before launching, and we you know as as you can see, hundred hours uh, plus of interviews with artists, galleries, museums. And we did come out that there were certain feature sets that we wanted to build in Imprimo. Um, portfolio and artwork management is something that we heard, especially from those that are more established artists. Yeah, when looking at uh, students or emerging artists, they were more interested in getting discovered and uh, making those connections. And we've embedded this, these uh, value propositions into Imprimo, which you'll see a little bit later. And one of the main things that is very unique, we feel, uh, compared to everything else that's out there, is to give the artist and the creator the ability to tell their story about the artwork, their journey, and themselves as an, as an artist. And this really uh, came out of these interviews that we had, especially with galleries, who, who would say that if there was context or a story around the artwork, and if the audience or viewer understood that, it generates exponentially more interest in the work. So once we heard that, the light bulbs went on and we really wanted to uh, drill that into Imprimo and, and that's something that we're doing that we feel is very different than what's out there uh, out there today. So um, hopefully that, that 
you know, answers a few questions about um, um, about how Imprimo is different than what's out there today. Um, if not, we can continue it on the chat. So I just wanted to establish a little bit about what we're talking about here today with Imprimo, but uh, maybe to put that a bit aside and get into our fireside chat um, with uh, Patty and Bob, um, maybe where we could start, um, Patty, is uh, do you want to speak a little bit about yourself as an artist, uh, a little bit of background before we get into these questions? Um, sure, very briefly. Um, I am uh, um, um, and have been a practicing visual artist for a couple of decades now. So I'm, you know, well, sort of, although I, <laughs> I still refer to myself as an emerging artist sometimes, but uh, uh, I, I certainly, you know, have a good deal of experience um, that I've built up over the years. Um, the focus of my work uh, has been uh, uh, painting primarily, but I do uh, work with installation, sculpture, uh, and some video uh, as well. Um, I, I'm based here in, uh, in uh, Edmonton, uh, and uh, where I have a studio, which I'm coming to you from today. Uh, and I should, I guess I should also tell you that I wear, I've had the privilege of wearing several different hats. So um, I was until recently was co-chair of copyright visual arts. Um, so I have a, a, a fair amount of knowledge about that. And I'm also currently national spokesperson and president for Carfac uh, National. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Very good. And Bob, could you say a couple words about yourself? Sure. Um, I uh, retired from uh, a teaching position or a consulting position in the art field uh, uh, about 11, 11 years ago. Um, so um, since then, I've been full time in the studio. Prior to that, I was, uh, I guess you could say, a part time artist, or, um, and, but I, I still spent a lot of time in the studio. Um, I've uh, I've exhibited mainly here in Western Canada and had the privilege of, uh, of um, moving to uh, very, a warmer place in Canada. Uh, and I have a studio here in the Okanagan in British Columbia. And I've been fortunate to uh, make connections with some uh, um, helpful people in the arts. Uh, they're, they're, it's, a, it's a great communi community here of artists. And it, it has enabled me to uh, to uh, to meet and and be involved in in exhibiting and uh, working with other artists. So I, I work in uh, sculpture now, or mainly uh, sculptural work, um, um, involved in it with my previous uh, uh, endeavors into paintings. I, I I bring that into the sculpture and uh, build three dimensional pieces. Um, and um, um, I'm at a stage right now where uh, I feel I, I'm no longer an emerging artist, much like Patty. I, I sometimes always thought of myself as an emerging artist, but uh, I guess I'm not anymore. Um, I'm getting too old for that, for one thing. Um, so um, yeah, that's a bit of my background. I guess I'm, I'm thinking, and maybe I'll come to this question later at the end, but uh, kind of curious of how you both are thinking about uh, what an emerging artist uh, really means. Uh, I think maybe it's a little bit different than what I'm thinking. <laughs> but uh, my first question uh, to you, Patty, is uh, you have one of the most detailed profiles on Imprimo. Uh, can you tell us more about how Imprimo helps you in your career? Sure. Um, well, I hope I can anyway. Um, the uh... Um, uh, certainly, uh, I, uh, I think I, I, you know, I, I have a background in, uh, historical research as well as being, I worked as an archivist as well. So, um, the, the sort of the idea of organizing my, uh, my own work, uh, I guess came fairly natural, naturally to me. Uh, so I've always been careful to, uh, collect and save you know information about um, um, exhibitions uh, 
um, you know, anything that I've done, residencies, all that sort of thing, uh, as I've been going along. So when it came to me um, building my profile on uh, on Imprimo, uh, I probably was a, a little bit ahead of the game. Uh, you know, I had I had gathered all the information, and I know that it can be daunting, but I'd have to say that uh, it's to me, you know, it's game changing in terms of the how ease the ease with which you can add information to this platform, um, uh, you know, as long as you have it gathered there. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I'm at the point where I've, I've had a website of my own for, for many years. I had somebody design it for me. Uh, it's, it's clunky. I can't, every time I go to it, I have to relearn uh, <laughs> simple processes because I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I tend to, because it's daunting, I don't use it as much. So I'm, uh, I'm currently sort of pulling the plug on that. Uh, and Imprimo is going to be the plat, the, it'll be essentially my, my, uh, my website. That's where I'll be directing, you know, hundred percent of my traffic because it's just so, uh, the, both what it offers, as you'll hear as we go along, and uh, the ease with which you can add information to it is, uh, I think, um, uh, way ahead of most platforms. Sounds great. And and Bob, how does Imprimo help you in your career? Um, I've actually only been involved with Imprimo for about three weeks, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. And um, so as far as it you know, enhancing my career in the arts. Uh, I, I, I can't judge that just yet, but I'll tell you what it really has done. It, first of all, it, as Patty says, it's, it's, it's a breeze. It's so easy for me to update daily if I want, um, add a work, take a work out, change a name, change a size, change a weight. Um, it's, it just, I just love it because I'm, I'm not a, a computer kind of guy. And I, I don't know how many people are, but, uh, um, it took me a while to work my, and I have a website. I, I work with WordPress, which is cumbersome. And, yep. uh, and again, it's a learning curve. Again, every time I go to it, I have to relearn things that I already knew. So, uh, but also in Primo has, has really made me feel um, organized. Um, I, I've, you know, the, the profile, building my profile, I've, um, looked at each piece that I put on there or and and look for where it came from look for the the uh, exhibits that it was involved in and uh, look for the photographs from those exhibits which <laughs> which I'm I, I haven't been a, a very a good archivist as I know Patty is so uh, I've I've searched in my in my uh, hundreds or thousands of photographs on my phone on and on my computer etc cetera, etc cetera, searching and what to add but I, I must say I'm at I'm still adding to it but I'm but I'm at the stage where I'm feeling very good about my profile now on Imprimo it just I look at it and I think wow I'm I'm I've been quite successful um, and um, and I think it's just a matter of looking back at it and and uh, the way it's put together it it enhances or it embellishes and it puts in front everything that I've accomplished, everything that, that I've done. And uh, it, it makes me feel pretty darn good about it. So I feel that it's going to be useful when I submit, uh, put submissions into galleries, because now when a gallery goes to my site or a curator goes to my site in Primo, um, they can read about um, how that work was developed, um, where the idea came from, um, how it relates to, like some of my, my work now relates to a, a very good friend of mine who's a musician, a composer in, uh, from Toronto. And um, I'm, I'm thinking, I put links of his, uh, his uh, work, his compositions on the site. And, um, and it just makes me feel that if somebody goes to my site, they will not only be able to look at the work and say, oh, yeah, looks okay, but they can now see the establishment, they can see the development, they can see the connections that, it's, that it makes. So I'm feeling very good about 
using Emprino at this stage. Yeah, sounds great. Um, resonated with me what you were saying about uh, websites uh, nowadays uh, for whether it's an artist or other reasons, people are using things like Squarespace or Wix or other things to build websites. And mm -hmm. those are all great uh, and to be able to do that on your own without a web developer, but it's true. Uh, and we do this for pressing, we're using Squarespace. When I have to go back to it and update, it's like, how do I do this again? So it is it is nice to uh, be able to have something with the templates and these forms where you don't have that learning curve, you just sort of jump back in it. Um, uh, uh, Patty, um, how would you, um, how important would you say is having an online presence for an artist? Well, I think it's essential nowadays. Um, um, you know, if you look at application processes um, from different institutions, galleries, gallery owners, uh, whether they're commercial or public, um, I think. Uh, art lovers, buyers, uh, potential buyers also are looking more, um, that's their entry point. Um, I, you know, some galleries seem to be, uh, you know, are being, I think it's, it's they're, uh, <laughs> they're, they're establishing a very robust online presence um, because it's becoming less and less about the physical gallery space that they, that they rent or own. Um, you know, that doesn't happen all the time, but it, I, I, for any number of reasons, I think, you know, it's pretty much central to, uh, to any good practice to uh, whether you're selling work, whether you're documenting it, whether you're publicizing it, um, you have to have an online uh, um, <clears throat> presence and the, the, you know, the way, the way you use it, it will vary according to what stage in your career you're at or what direction your, or what your focus is, whether it's purely in selling work, whether it's interesting, you know, uh, curators or uh, or gallerists, uh, um, uh, you know, and again, you so you I mean you at an early stage you could just be about building your sort of profile, uh, uh, but if you're a, um, a you know a more senior artist, it could be about documenting and uh, and your uh, um, presenting your career. In a sense, essentially, so so many different ways you can use it, but all I think the online is unquestionably important now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Bob, online presence for an artist. Um, I th I also think it's essential. I I know that I've been um, looking at a couple of of uh, gallery spaces that I I'm submitting to, and um, they actually ask for a website. Um, I, I don't know if anybody else has run into that, but um, so uh, when you're applying, they don't, want, they don't want anything. They just want a link to your website. They'll look at your website and, and decide whether or not they will uh, pursue you as an artist. So uh, I think it's essential. And um, um, I, 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 I can't see be, being without it. I must say, I, you know, I've had a web, website now for, I, I I think 10 years or more. And, um, and, but I, I've never felt that it was rep representing me very well. I, I think uh, that it, it showed pictures of my work mostly. And um, that, does, that does very little because uh, there are so many artists out there who, who have better pictures than I do of their work. And by that, by that I mean, you know, they, they come across better in a picture or a, an image. Um, so there has to be more to that website. Um, and although I did include in, in my previous website uh, uh, a lot of information, I tried to, but it just doesn't build a profile the same as, uh, as in Primo. So the presence, my presence, I think is, is much more, uh, um, has, has established itself. And, and I feel very confident with, with the way I'm able to present myself uh, just looking at Imprimo. I, mean, I, I sound like an advertisement for Imprimo, I'm sorry, but uh, um, um, you know, I, I feel quite confident. It, it, it represents my career as, as Patty was saying. It, it not only shows what I'm doing, but it, it's my whole life, my whole career on there, at least for the 20 years. I've only gone back about 20 years. I, I figure that's far enough back and um, Although there's some work I'd like to put on it yet, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, 
being online, being having a website is so important. I'd like to have that business card, which I'm, which I'm thinking of making, walking into a gallery, no matter where I am and which country I'm in or, or which uh, province I'm in, just handing that card to the, uh, to the uh, owner, the curator and saying, hey, why don't you just take a look at my stuff? And, uh, and I think I feel confident enough now with the profile, the way it's being built, that uh, I'm able to do that. Before I didn't, didn't yeah. feel confident. I still did it, but I didn't feel it as confident. For sure. In, in the current online environment, we've seen a rise in artists' work being misattributed and used without authorization. I talked a little bit about that before. Um, what do you think are some of the best practices that artists can do uh, to uh, make their copyright claims more robust? Uh, maybe we'll start with you, Bob. Any thoughts on that? Uh, okay, uh, you're probably starting with the wrong person because I have I have to be honest with you. I I really didn't care before. I you know um, I I I must say I was blind to the to the to to anything being copyright as far as my work goes. Um, I'm much more aware of it now. Just lately. Uh, only because I've, you know, I, I've listened to the uh, the video conferences a couple of times now and realizing, hey, maybe it's important. Um, uh, it did not concern me prior, so I'm, you know, I'm I'm not a good person to talk to about copyright, but um, I'm certainly aware of it now, and I'm certainly going to to be uh, uh, conscious of it in, in when I develop and finish developing this this website. So beyond yeah. that, I'll pass it over to Patty. I'm sure he has a lot more to say. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. Patty. Well, yeah, I, I, you know, obviously I have a, you know, a bit more background in it, but um, uh, I think a lot of privacy, uh, copyright infringement, you have to realize, you know, it's not all malicious. Some of it comes out of ignorance rather than, uh, you know, a deliberate attempt to, to pirate your work, but it does happen. I mean, we hear about it at, at, at Carfac, at RAV, and through Copyright Visual Arts on a daily basis. People are, uh, you know, are saying, well, somebody has taken my work and is making t-shirts from it without my permission, or they're reproducing it in something that I, I don't agree with, whatever. Um, so I, I, in terms of best practices, I would say, uh, that it's it's impossible to completely uh, proof your work uh, from 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 exploitation, but um, do your research before posting any work on any platform, like whether it's your website or uh, Instagram, Facebook, or anything. Um, uh, and you know, it's it's. Um, Aside from this, it's, I think it's important that you look for, a, uh, try and get a written contract of some sort if somebody's going to use your work. That can be as simple as having an email dialogue with somebody, which can, which will then, you, which you can, you know, produce later and say, well, look, this person agreed that they would, you know, so and such and such. But, a, you know, a written contract is even better. This is why Copyright Visual Arts is such a great organization. It's free to join it. Uh, and they manage your copyright. So if you get a request or uh, for uh, for somebody to use your work, you can just, as I do now, it like <clears throat> I had an exhibition early in the year, um, which was part of a group show. I just said, here, yeah, here's the <laughs> here's the email for Copyright Visual Arts. They look after my copyright. They dealt directly with the gallery owner. I just got on with producing the work for the show. Uh, um, uh, so I would be, you know, I, I think there. <clears throat> if you're busy in your practice, some people can handle their own copyright, that's fine. But if you're busy, uh, it's a great way to ensure that your work is used correctly uh, and that you get the proper remuneration for, uh, for the licensing of that work. Um, but above all, I mean, in Primo, uh, the verification and authentication, which is what this platform has been built on. I mean, when we all sat down four years ago or five years ago to try and make this work, uh, the basis of it was protecting people's work. Mm -hmm. 
because we all we were all aware of, of the the copyright side of things so it, you know the the fact that it's uh, that your work becomes gets an a, an immune, sort of a, a a blockchain a unique blockchain number uh, you can produce qr codes for it you can produce a cert, uh, certificate of authenticity all of that people that will that will lessen the effect of the, the chances of people um, using your work uh, unscrupulously because I think just by, they see that strong authority, uh, you know, on the platform and the level of verification, it's gonna make people think twice. And, you know, we've already seen instances, I think of people being able to produce that QR code and the, that Imprimo documentation and get people to, to stop exploiting their work so yeah, um, yeah so, absolutely yeah, i won't go on any longer yeah <laughs> absolutely it's also a really good point you bring up that it's not it, i think the narrative out there is when people are uh, misattributing or misusing works it's done maliciously but it's not always the case sometimes it's just people don't know the rules or yeah. are completely kind of unaware that they're infringing so uh i've been i've also uh i've worked in copyright most of my adult life and i I don't think I've ever had anyone explain it to me correctly outside of the walls of the office. So it is hard to understand and people, uh, I think sometimes um, just aren't aware. So hopefully um, what we're doing brings awareness. Um, the next question here is, um, um, what are some of the things that you think are important uh, for an artist uh, to include when they're telling the story about their work. Um, Patty, do we want to start with you? Uh, sure. I, I um, well, I mean, I, I think it's pretty simple. The better you can explain your work uh, and put it in context, uh, the stronger it's going to be, I think, uh, um, and the more professional it will appear. Um, the uh, everybody, I think, in the arts economy, whether it's a gallery owner, uh, a buyer, a potential buyer, um, um, a curator, somebody who's writing about art, they all want to know the story uh, mm -hmm. behind it. Um, so, you know, images just aren't enough, um, I don't think. Um, so, I, and here's the thing is, I, like, I see my work um, as a sort of a continuous uh, development of overlapping themes. Um, so it, it's really vital to me to be able to tell that story and link those things together, which is why Imprima was so powerful that you can, you know, you can, <clears throat> you have a timeline of the work, which you can add, go off into different exhibitions where the, where the work has developed uh, and evolved. Um, there's no other platform that gives you the ability to do that on one space at the moment. Uh, uh, so it's, um, it has made me sort of, uh, <clears throat> I think more eager and more conscious to, you know, to, to grab everything I, I can that's relevant to my work and put it in there because it's so easy to do. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm just scanning my notes here. Um, I, you know, I would say, you know, you can you can look at other platforms, but do a comparison based on your needs. Everybody's needs are different. Um, um, everything all, they all offer different things. Uh, but I think <laughs> I'm convinced, certainly, that uh, you know, and Primo is the one that uh, offers the the broadest range uh, of uh, a, of tools. Uh, that can make that you can customize to go in different directions depending on what your your focus is in, in, with your work. Yeah, and, and Bob, you know, there's a lot of uh, marketplaces that are out there and give uh, artists the ability to sell their work, um, but there's not a lot of tools out there to be able to tell the story. Um, how important is it for you? Do you think to tell uh, your story as an artist and the artwork story? to add value to the work? I, th I think there's, for me, there's uh, there's two important facts. One is um, to tell my story to myself. Um, in other words, to give me, to, to look back, to look at that 
website and, and see the histories, see the development that I have achieved, um, it just reflects um, uh, a, a positiveness uh, towards you know, my inner feelings um, because uh, I, I realize the accomplishments that I, that I have, have been successful with. And as far as um, the website and the story with galleries, well, it's strange. I was just on another website uh, prior to, uh, to, to this meeting and um, the, the first thing they ask uh, or the first thing they suggest uh, if you submit any work to their online gallery uh, is they want to know the story behind it. So I think it's important, uh, uh, the, the story. And not only is it important, uh, like in a body of work, what I like about Imprimo is that I can tell an individual story about each piece if I, if I so desired. Um, there might be some quirk or some, something that made me decide to, uh, to uh, expose a, a, a certain range of colors on my, in my work, some shapes and to that particular work. Uh, Imprimo uh, allows me to do that um, and, and to go on uh, um, with how it relates to a body of work, how it, how it developed individually. Um, so the story, uh, the storyline is, is important. And not only that, it's very easy to do, which I really enjoy. So, uh, and I can edit it so easily if I, if I put it up, and which I have done, by the way, on Imprima. I've written something up and then the next day thinking, now oh, that's kind of silly, that sounds, that sounds funny. Well, I just go back at it and make the change, edit, hit edit, change it, hit save, I'm done. So um, um, that aspect of it really works well as, for me as well. So the story, two things, again, just to repeat, one, important to the artist, for myself anyway, um, to, it's, it's an archive, it's my archive, it's my history. And, um, and it's, it's great to see it online. And uh, the second part is, you know, it's, it's, it's so easy to share a story of a piece and or a body of work with a gallery or with a curator and, uh, and bring it up in front of them when you're sitting with a curator, you can bring up your work and, and you may forget something, it's there online. So um, um, it's, to me, it's, it's, it's now impossible to be without it. So there you go. Yeah, fantastic. I think that's the first time I've heard, you know, it's important to the artist to have that story there as well. And uh, we'll, once we get to the demo, we'll show some examples of, of these uh, storytelling and how, and how it works. Um, <clears throat> Patty, you had mentioned the QR codes before. Uh, can you tell us more about how you're using those QR codes during exhibitions to help share the story behind your work? <clears throat> Yeah, um, certainly. Uh, <clears throat> coincidentally, I just uh, just uh, gave a talk at a closing. I just had a show of of war of, of paintings uh, that's finished a run at a, at a commercial gallery, and uh, my gallery owner was only too happy to include uh, those QR codes uh, on the label for each painting, and, and that was really helpful because it meant that people could go. Uh, people were coming in browsing around the gallery. They could they could then yeah click on the, the QR code and have a record of that work on their phone uh, if they wanted to refer to it later. Uh, they could also um, they, then of course that leads them to they can go look at other about more about me and more about the you know other work that I've done. Um, uh, before I put when, as soon as work leaves the studio here. Uh, I put the I print download and print the QR code for it, the work and uh, and uh, attach it to the uh, the the back of the painting. That also helps, I think, from the ask, from the point of view of uh, uh, curators and gallery owners uh, or even art buyers, because but in the case of gallery owners and things, they they they're moving work about in storage in and out of storage. It doesn't you know when it when it go when it goes into a commercial gallery it's there for a considerable length of time there's no confusion then about what the title of the work is or if it matches their records um and or if there is they can just simply go to that QR code as as, as confirmation um 
if a, if somebody buys it and they don't remember or they want to refresh their memory of the history of it, it's there on the back or they move the work, uh, it's there. Um, and this time um, I added another dimension to it because I was uh, I gave a closing talk uh, in which uh, I, I there was quite a few sort of quotations uh, that related to uh, my, my my own philosophy and, and, and things about the work. So uh, now if you go to the works that were in that show that are listed on Imprimo, uh, the show was called Once Removed, uh, but each work that was in it, <clears throat> in the description, has a, a, a small quotation or piece of text that to me relates to the the theme behind the show. Um, and so I, you know, I didn't have to, I, I was able to tell people at, at this close, at this reception or talk during the talk, well, these quotations and, and, and others are also attached to each work. So I think there's, there's, and, and that's only the ones I've discovered. That's the one, you know, but uh, I think it's a really great tool. And yes, you can, I noticed somebody in the questions earlier, each work has a unique QR code. Yes. Oh, I haven't been keeping track of the questions. Yes, I see. I'll get to those. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So when you use the QR code for the exhibition, you put the QR code right on like the gallery card? They, they gallery produced labels and they just, I just yeah. sent them uh, a PDF of each QR code or a JPEG of each QR code and they just put it right in their label format. Oh, fantastic. So the title of the painting was there. They, you know, the, all the, the uh, <clears throat> all the information, uh, the height and everything, uh, uh, dimensions and that sort of thing. Uh, but <clears throat> it also meant that people could go and read just a little bit more about that work. And it, it could have been, uh, it wasn't in this case because it was new work, but uh, it could have shown that this work was exhibited also here in Ontario or somewhere uh, previously. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, last question. Um, the two of you have been making art for very- that? Sorry, Stephen, can I just oh, add- sure. absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay. um, just recently I was at a show in, in Penticton here in uh, British Columbia and uh, at the uh, Penticton uh, Public Gallery and uh, there were QR codes on the uh, artwork uh, which I, you know, it was new to me, and uh, it was so helpful for me to uh, to uh, be standing there with my iPhone or with my uh, smartphone and uh, uh, scan and and get information on the painting. So I, I thought it was what a great idea. I've I've not used QR codes yet. I've, like I say, I've only been on for three weeks, but uh, I, I I do think it's important. Uh, I just thought of something as as when Patty was talking, and when you're in a group show. And you know, all of us, you know, are in group shows throughout our careers, and um, and you know, a group show of uh, twenty or forty artists, however many, um, um, your work is one of forty, and people walk by and scan your work with their vision and keep on walking and 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 sort of forget about your work. Well, <laughs> if you have a QR code on your work. They can, if they see it, they like it, they can find out information about it and you become more important or, or you become uh, 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 not only part of the group show, but you become a solo show uh, individually with that QR code, which I think is extremely important. Now I talked to JR as well, who was originally going to host Indeed. this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gene, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, we, I spoke to him about something that, that might be incorporated into uh, Imprino, Imprimo in the future, depending on number of numbers of people involved in wanting to be uh, involved in this particular aspect of QR codes. Um, I myself, I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm working with a musician composer in, in Toronto and uh, we're sort of collaborating. And um, I, I'm going to have, the, he and I are gonna, be in this major show in, in uh, the new year. And um, now that I've involved with Primo and found out about QR codes, I want to involve uh, the QR code. I wanted to, to, to direct people to his compositions musically. So when they look at my piece 
and uh, there are three or four compositions that he that he's written uh, musically um, that relate to certain parts of, of the body of work that I've done. So if they stand in front of that work, they can scan the QR code and and hear uh, Murray's music. So uh, to me, QR codes are going to be an important aspect uh, in the future for for my bodies of work. So anyway, that's all I have to say. Yeah, fantastic. Um, last question to the both of you. Uh, you've both been uh, making art for a very long time. Um, as you were saying, maybe no longer emerging artists. Uh, how do you go about keeping track of the catalog of your works? Uh, Patty, this seems like this is in your wheelhouse. Maybe we'll start with you. Um, I'm old school. Um, I still keep a, a, a paper ledger of uh, um, where I list work. I, I give it an inventory number. I write it down, make notes about it, whatever. Uh, uh, I might go back periodically and uh, delete work or if it's worked over or it's destroyed or whatever. Um, um, it. Uh, uh, I've, that's that has been really invaluable to me on several occasions where I've got, you know, <laughs> where you produce stuff and you think, well, where did that go? Uh, or was that in that show? Or um, where did it end up? Whatever. Um, and I've been able to figure it out mostly because I kept those records. So I still do that. I'll still continue to do that. Um, I keep a digital image of each work when it's finished. Um, uh, and um, also, I think increasingly in Primo will become a sort of a, 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 a way of uh, inventorying and referring um, to work. You know, it doesn't do the same thing as some, you know, as there are specialist platforms, Artwork Archive is one that, that, that is more inventory based, but then the trade-offs are just that, uh, you know, in, Artwork Archive doesn't do what, lots of things that Imprimo does in terms of telling your story and enhancing your career. Um, it's also very much more an American-based program. Uh, I like the fact that this is built and owned and operated by Canadian artists. Um, and that, that will remain its focus, even though it, it is open to, you know, people worldwide. Yeah. And I see that that is a question in the chat. Is this meant for Canadian artists only or others can use the site? Definitely with uh, getting Canada Council funding, definitely aimed at looking at uh, Canadian artists uh, to sustain the Imprimo and to make it viable. We are going to be launching two other uh, areas like the UK and France. Um, and we are, if you go onto the site, you'll see that there's some smatterings of people uh, international. So we are looking to, to expand, but as Patty said, we are Canadian made and Canadian focused in that. Just, just one more quick thing. I think I, I always remind people, I think uh, that it, it doesn't really matter what system you have, as long as you have a system to, to, uh, to sort of manage your work. Yeah, yeah. And, and Bob, with regards to cataloging your work, any thoughts there? Well, I guess I'm very old school as well. Um, mm -hmm. um, I photograph each piece I photograph my work um, but I I've been procrastinating on on a lot of those photographs sometimes I forget where I've put them on the computer and in, into which uh, folder that that I may have saved them and uh, I must say that in primo uh, working on the profile and uh, um, it has uh, forced me to search through many of those those folders of photographs that I have so that I can build the story behind uh, some of the artwork that I've posted on, uh, on my, on the website. So, um, and I, you know, <laughs> I have canvases. I have a, a crawl space under the house. I, I roll them up and uh, I, I attach a, with a piece of masking tape, a piece of paper on, you know, which, which paintings are in that particular role. Um, I always thought I would photograph them and have a photo reference, uh, you know, for each uh, particular roll of paintings under the house, but um, that hasn't come about yet. So um, I'm I'm still in the learning stages. I, I'm an emerging um, archivist. <laughs> That's perfect. 
Very good. I think that's a good way to uh, to end this segment uh, of our of our conversation here. Uh, thanks, thanks uh, both Patty and and Bob for um, having this chat. I, I've talked to artists as as I was showing before for hundreds of hours now, but I'm still learning even on this call today. So thanks very much. I just wanted to take uh, you know maybe 15 to 20 minutes and go through a bit of a demo of Imprimo and just sort of show some of its functionality and maybe address some of the things that we're seeing where people are having some difficulties and then leave a little bit of time at the end for for some questions. So let me just share my screen again. And um, let me just maximize this. Okay. So this is what it looks like. And this is my uh, default uh, or test profile that I've created on our, on Imprimo here. And, um, what, why I wanted to show, you know, this when you log in, this is what we call our homepage, logged in homepage is you navigate around and you can always click back to this home icon, which brings you here. Um, I wanted to show this because this here we've, we have these different sections broken out and these essentially show like the three different parts of what you're doing on Imprimo, at least right now. You're uploading artworks, you're building your online profile and you're creating your CV. So we'll talk a little bit about, you know, these three different areas um, in a little bit more detail to just show what Imprimo is about. And if you've already registered, maybe uh, help you out a little bit on what, what you can do. To I'm just going to. In an hour or so or two hours tomorrow, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, back to this. So, get rid of this. With regards to the profile, so we can show Bob's profile here because it's looking really great. Um, as you can see, you have um, an avatar of yourself. So, when somebody comes on to your profile, they see uh, a little picture of yourself. Uh, we recommend um, having like Bob where it's a, you know, a picture of your face well lit so people can see who you are. Some people have put in their avatars like themselves at a distance and that doesn't really work. You can't really make out because these things are usually shown in the smaller format. Um, here you can make use of uh, a sentence to sort of introduce yourself or where you're from. And this is what we call the cover image, where you can put in um, either your favorite work to sort of show yourself off, or um, as Patty has um, uh, yourself in the studio in sort of the action shot. And these are a, a good idea to um, be able to sort of communicate how you work and who you are a little bit through through this. Um, if you don't have a picture like this, then having you know. One of your favorite works shown here that gives uh, somebody a sense of your practice is a really good idea. Uh, you know, we have the the bio here. Here you can enter in different keywords, and we have some keywords that are pre-selected, but you can also add in your own if you feel that those aren't there. Um, and this way, when people are searching, and it, if people are searching in Primo through this magnifying glass here. If they search in Primo and hit one of those keywords, they'll see your profile. Or if you add these keywords onto your work records, they'll find your work records when they're searching. We have a little button here um, where people can fill in this form and it will send uh, an email to the representative that you've defined in your profile. I've noticed when looking in some people's profiles, they haven't filled this out. So I just want to flag in the profile here that in this section, contact details, uh, really strongly recommend that you fill this out and put in like who's going to receive the inquiries through the email because not everybody has. And that will make you know this button essentially non-functional. So to receive inquiries, uh, please fill this out. Also below we have, um, there was a question about, can I link to my, my website through through a Primo, absolutely. You can put in the links to your website, to your blogs, to your social. All this can be added here um, so that this can be your hub and people can either drive traffic to your blog, your website, your socials, what, whatever have you. Um, 
So that is what I would say about the profile. Also, I, well, I guess one last thing is you, you're able to share your profile through your favorite socials or even by email, or you can copy the link to your profile and uh, share it with others. So <clears throat> we recommend um, doing that. I don't think a lot of artists are taking advantage of this uh, at this time, but we really recommend uh, to promote yourself um, you know, sh uh, share your Primo profile with everybody that you can so they can come on here and see uh, everything about you. Um, so that's that. Um, I would say just coming back, back home. The other thing uh, here is uploading your artwork. So within the artwork records, we have um, quite a bit of functionality that we've embedded here and does a lot of that storytelling that we've been talking about. Um, first of all, when it comes to your artwork records, just like I was showing on the profile, you can share them and um, with your favorite so show favorite socials and your um, your website uh, via email. Um, this as a way to share your records with others. I just actually opened up what it would look like. Um, I'm logged into my Facebook. If I was to share it on Facebook. It sort of pre-populates a uh, lower resolution image here that when this gets posted, if people click on the image, they get directed to the artwork record and has the title and a little bit of what I'm Primo there. Um, <clears throat> on Imprimo, what we've done to be able to show, you know, a greater breadth of the work is you can add in more than one image to the artwork to sort of show, like if it's a sculpture, to show different sides of it. If it's a larger work like this of patties, uh, you can show some of the details. So we really encourage um, artists when coming on here and uploading uh, their work, that if they do have multiple photos of the work to, to take advantage of that, because this you know sort of gives more detail and better tells the story of the work. Uh, here we also have, as uh, Patty had mentioned in the conversation, the blockchain ID. What is blockchain? What is this ID? Essentially, what we're doing here is when a work is published onto Imprimo, we're taking all the metadata about the work and we're sending it onto a blockchain to, be, to get a permanent timestamp of your claim to this work. So what, what, is, what is a blockchain? Essentially, it's a decentralized database. And um, what that essentially means is it uh, doesn't have a an easy way to be hacked. There's no single point of failure, like a common centralized database. And essentially, you know, it'll kind of live forever because it's being decentralized and living on computers all over the world. So this is sort of this way to create like an immutable permanent uh, stamp on like, this is my work and I own the copyright and I own this. So that's what we're doing here. That's a little bit new and different. If this is sort of gobbledygook to you or you're not really interested, that's fine. <laughs> that's not something that you really need to be con concerned about because we're handling all this for you. That when you um, publish onto Imprimo, this is all done automatically. But when talking to many artists and especially artistic uh, photographers are, are very uh, interested in having this um, permanent timestamp that happens on, on the blockchain. If you were to update your record, like if you change the metadata, maybe you mistype the title or, you know, whatever the case may be, um, what happens is once it, that edit it happens and is published onto Imprimo, we add another um, claim on the, on the blockchain. So this provenance of all the changes to the record are, are made and logged on the blockchain there. Uh, below that, we have sort of more typical metadata about the work, and we have all the different um, permissions available as defined by the artists when uploading the work. So if it's available for exhibition, you can say so. General inquiries, you can say so. If it's available to buy, you can say so. And what we're looking at in the future, in the new year, is partnering with, uh, you know, marketplaces that would be embedded into here. So if you had your work uh, on an online marketplace on an you know on another website, you'd be able to link out from here onto that marketplace where they could go buy. It's definitely part of um, you know uh, or not part of Imprimo's path is to be a marketplace. We want to partner with those marketplaces and create that kind of integration. Uh, below that, we have the creation story. 
And um, what this is about is essentially telling the story of how this work was made and giving that greater context that uh, I was talking about before. So you can add videos, images, documents, you can upload all this stuff here, tell when it was started and when it was completed, where it was done, and you know a description about it. So again, this comes back to the storytelling to be able to show uh, how this work was made. <laughs> and also going back to what I was saying near the very beginning about enhancing the trust of uh, the claims that are happening online. Uh, if an artist can come in here and tell the story around the work, upload the photos of, of how they're making it or, or what we see here, it gives more um, assurance to the, uh, to the audiences that they're actually looking at the correct uh, work that's claimed by the correct artist here that it's not somebody who's grabbed an image online and claiming it as themselves because we have more evidence here to, to give uh, credibility to the claim. Uh, below that, we have what's called the artwork timeline or another way of talking about it is the provenance of the work. So this is where uh, yourselves as artists can come in here and um, add the different events that happen within its life cycle. So exhibitions, in this case, publications and interviews. And um, when you do that, you can add um, videos, images, documents, as the case is here. And when this kind of um, supplementary uh, material is added, um, this kind of evidence, we, we have a check mark that comes here and says the evidence is provided. Again, it tells the greater story about the work, it tracks the provenance of the work, which everybody wants. And also it um, you know, gives credibility to the claim that this is the correct artist that's making the correct claim to the work. Um, this is sort of in the first phase of what we're doing with this uh, provenance piece. What we wanna be doing in the future when we bring in the different uh, players is to have you know, galleries be able to come in here and attest to the claims that are being made, like this exhibition actually happened, or there's other exhibitions that happened and we could enter in that data as the gallery. Or if, you know, this was a piece that was sold that, you know, the buyer would be able to come in here and add, you know, um, data and entries about, uh, you know, how it was sold. So in that way, it's a bit of like a, a Wikipedia where people are different players are coming in from the ecosystem and adding to this uh, this timeline or the provenance data. So that way audiences, when they come here are able to see like the complete history and story uh, about the work. And, and also bringing transparency to this. This is sort of the other issue that exists uh, in the art world today that we've discovered through our research is there's a lot of opacity and there isn't a lot of transparency and provenance or, you know, elements in, about uh, artworks. And we're trying to bring that uh, to the forefront and have a one-stop shop when it comes to, um, you know, finding uh, provenance information, the story behind the work, who actually owns this work, these kinds of things, who has the copyright. Um, everybody that registers uh, and wants to, you know, publish uh, their profile and artworks onto Imprimo are required to verify their ID. So again, this comes in to creating that uh, reliable resource for um, audiences when they when they come to Imprimo, knowing that they're they're actually um, looking at this is the real Patty Lamb that has come onto the site and created a profile. On most other websites, when you go on to uh, those sites and you look at an artist's profile, um, yeah, it might be the artist, but maybe not. But here we actually have a process where the artist has to verify their ID in order to publish on Imprimo. So um, that's what I would say uh, about that regarding the artwork records. Um, here's one by Bob's here that also has the timeline of the solo exhibitions that have been added here, um, all looking really good. And this one has the creation story. So you can add as much or as little detail as you want. If in this case, uh, if you don't didn't happen to have images to be able to add, you don't have to, and you can just add it in description 
whatever whatever you can or cannot do, uh, you know, our Primo can accommodate for that. We did try to make it as flexible as possible. Um, and the last, uh, well, one, one of the last things I wanted to get to was uh, on the CV, what we're doing here is a little bit different than what exists out there today is that um, you're able to create these CV entries or what we call it the living CV. And the CV is organized in these different headings that you can go through. And if you wanted to look at specific elements, you could do so. Um, in this one that I had opened, what's nice is you can link to the different artwork records that, that were uh, related to, um, to the event, in this case, a solo exhibition that Patty had, he had these four works. So if I click on any of these, it will take me to the artwork record. Also, you can add in like um, videos, images, documents, these kinds of things to give breadth to, um, to uh, the story of the artist, uh, you know, um, give evidence to the claims that the artist is making that they actually exhibited here, um, that kind of thing. Also, what's really important to note as far as workflow is concerned is if you are in the, if I go back to my profile here, if you are in the uh, CV interface, uh, and this is like if I'm creating an exhibition, you can link to any of your artworks in that form. And once you've done that, that will be automatically be added to the timeline of that artwork. So that sort of saves you time. You don't have to do it in both places. Um, also, if you're in the artwork interface and you are um, wanting to add to the timeline, these different events, solo exhibitions, uh, group exhibitions, these will also be added to your CV. So there's this, if you like working in the CV interface, then they will be added to the works. If you like working in the work interface, they will be added to the CV, but there isn't this uh, duplication of work. So we tried um, to make that as easy as possible with regards uh, to that. Um, while I'm here, I will also show that um, this is what it looks like in, if I open up an artwork record and want to edit it. Uh, one of the things that we were talking about a little bit earlier was um, the QR codes and the certificates of creation. So if I open this uh, certificate here, you're able to uh, save and download this. Uh, the purpose being that um, well, one of the use cases was when people are um, many, especially independent artists, when they're selling their work, they are they either don't have or have to create their own sort of uh, documentation around the work. This sort of does it for you and it is done in a neat and tidy and attractive way. Uh, it also includes like um, some Imprimo information, like when the claim was made on Imprimo to this work, uh, the blockchain ID, um, and also the QR code here, which links you to the um, the art, the public artwork record if anyone was to scan this with their phone. Um, you can also just um, download, as Patty was talking about, um, just the QR code portion of it. And much like Patty was talking about, you could take this QR code and use it in an exhibition or any other kind of relevant use case uh, in that way. So that's there for you as well. And that is unique to every artwork. Um, so in this test artwork, that QR code looks like that. If I went back to my catalog of test works here, if I went into a different artwork, I would get a different uh, QR code for that, um, that there. So um, I think that was probably all the things that, I wanted to cover. I think those are sort of the three main modules, uploading artworks, building your profile, and create your CV. Um, one of the things maybe I can address is we've gotten a lot of questions about, do I need to do everything right now and have everything prepared? Or can I um, you know, go along at my own pace? And the answer is very much like, please come on board, uh, register, verify your ID and work at your own pace as far as like adding your profile, it's okay to sort of add minimal data at first and then you can build it out um, as, as you want. 
The same thing with your uh, create your CV or your uploading your works. You can just come in and upload a few works and test the system and see how you like it and see how it works before um, you know going into uh, more depth about you know uploading your entire catalog. On that note, actually, one thing I should say is we do have um, this import your artwork function. Right now, we partnered, of course, with Copyright Visual Arts and NOAC, uh, which is um, a database that um, an image bank that was created by RAV in Quebec. So if you have images on the Copyright Visual Arts um, image bank, you're able to import those into Imprimo in order to save time. So if I just quickly show that, I can search either the RAV uh, image bank or um, Copyright Visual Arts. And if I put in Patty here, for example, I will uh, search and get these images from Patty. And then if I was Patty, I could import these artworks into uh, my catalog and uh, be able to um, you know, add a little bit more metadata and publish it uh, a lot more easily than starting from scratch. So right now we've partnered with Copyright Visual Arts and NOAC. In the future, we'd love to partner with different galleries to be able to import images and make this easier for everybody. It is a little bit of work to come in here and <clears throat> do these different workflows, but like was said on the call today, and I think, I mean, I feel pretty proud about the workflows that we've created to just make it as easy as possible. We realize it's a lot of work, but um, to be able to come in here and have the data broken down into these different headings and you know just sort of work through it piece by piece, um, I think it's, it's sort of the best we could do as far as breaking down uh, things in you know bite-sized chunks. Um, okay. I think I'll leave it at that.